Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Welcome to Worship with Our Savior's Lutheran Church from Rochester, Minnesota. To start our worship today, let's share our highs and lows. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. 
You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join us in the greeting, saying the words and doing the hand and arm actions just like us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. love for the world, your word became flesh, to live with us and to reconcile us to you and to each other. Rekindle among us the gift of your spirit, so that we seek to live harmoniously with all people, breaking down the walls that divide, ending the hostility in our midst, and proclaiming your wholeness. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our story for today is from the Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But... You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of our Lord. Today, we're celebrating the festival of the Ascension, that moment when Jesus was lifted up into the sky and vanished. 
Now, Jesus never really leaves us. His presence is always with us. But at the ascension, he physically left this earth. It's an important part of Jesus' story and the story of the church. Because if Jesus never left, then we, the church, would never have had to grow. Think about it. Before Jesus was crucified, he healed people, he cast out demons, he made food, he controlled the climate, he helped people get along with each other, he inspired people to change their minds and their ways, and to top it all off, he came back from the dead. Jesus had to leave, because if he didn't, the disciples would still be stuck on that mountain, wondering when Jesus was going to bring back the kingdom of Israel. You see, even after all that time that they'd spent with him, after all the teaching he'd done, after all the miracles and healings, after his death and resurrection, Jesus' followers were still stuck on the idea that he had come to be an earthly king who would lead an army against the Romans, bringing victory and prosperity for Israel. But that wasn't Jesus' way. That wasn't the kind of Messiah he was. Instead of war, Jesus brought peace. Instead of domination, Jesus brought servanthood. Instead of violence, Jesus brought love. Jesus had to leave. Because if he hadn't, we wouldn't have grown in our understanding of who he was of what mattered to him, of who mattered to him. Jesus left so that we could become what we needed to become, Jesus' hands and feet active in our world today. But what does that look like? Well, broadly speaking, it looks like our order for affirmation of baptism. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? In other words, since God has claimed us in baptism, we have been given these responsibilities. Now, we aren't perfect, and we're never going to be perfect. We will struggle to follow through with these, and that's just to be expected. But, siblings in Christ, the events of this past week have shown that with this last point, striving for justice and peace in all the earth, we have done more than struggle at living it out. We have abjectly failed to live it out. And I, as your pastor, have utterly failed you by not doing more to lead us in living it out. And for that, I am truly sorry. Friends in Christ, we have a serious problem with guns in our country. I don't mean the guns that my family and my friends use for hunting. I mean the mass availability of weapons of war designed only to kill people. We have a problem in that an individual's right to own any weapon that they choose and to do so without any meaningful way to judge their emotional fitness to do so, we value that more than we value the lives of our children. That's a value we cherish. That's a moral good that we uphold. How can that be? How can it be that we would choose an inanimate object that only causes death over the lives of our children? How can we look at ourselves in the mirror knowing that we have chosen this demonic path? Can we honestly say that we serve all people following the example of Jesus and that we strive for justice and peace in all the earth, while we allow these weapons to be used to commit atrocities? Now, I'm aware that this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. 
a weekend when we honor the lives of soldiers who died in the line of duty defending our nation. And I'm aware that on Sunday we will go across the parking lot to our columbarium and we will have a ceremony where we do just that. But above all, I am aware of the terrible irony that we as a nation have chosen to honor the sacrifice of those brave soldiers who died on our behalf, who died so that we could live by turning around and killing each other in churches, hospitals, and schools with weapons of war. This is how we have chosen to honor their sacrifice for us. But no longer. We will not let this continue. We cannot. Not if we have one shred of integrity for the vow that we make when we affirm our baptisms. For too long we have let the demons of fear and apathy control us, turning away from the love and hope that are our birthright as baptized followers of Christ. But not today. Today we reclaim that gift that Jesus gave us in the ascension. Our agency. Our ability to be the change that God so desperately wants for our world. The change that Jesus died and rose for. The change that we will accomplish as Jesus' hands and feet at work, at, at work in the world. And we can start in these ways. We can fill our social media posts with posts calling for new legislation to put limits on guns. We can talk to our family and friends, encouraging them to do the same. We can write to, email, call, and message our elected leaders, demanding that they take action. We can volunteer to mentor kids who are struggling in life. We can choose not to buy these weapons and ammunition. These are the kind of things that we can do. And if we do them, if we choose to really live out our baptismal promises to work for justice and peace, we will make a difference. We have to make a difference.
united with the whole church across time and space, let us join our confession with theirs using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One, ruler of heaven and earth, wash us in your Holy Spirit and make us witnesses to your resurrected life in this community. Let our fellowship be assigned to others of the presence of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through thundering, mighty waters, reveal your creative power at work in creation. Cleanse the air, land, and waters with the movement of your spirit and the participation of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by illness, depression, or constant worry. We pray especially for Sharon, Sandra, Maxine, Orland, Tim, Arliss, Merle, Karen, David, Bob, Joan, Francis, Byron, Lois, Jeanette, Bonnie, Marcia, Connie, Mike, Sandy, and those we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our healer and refuge, we pray for all who suffer from gun violence. With your mercy, bind up their wounds, restore their bodies, and heal their hearts. Comfort the mourners, embrace the lonely. With your might, empower us to change this broken world. Make us advocates for a stable society, alive with hope in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. You gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We now get ready to share in the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in bread and wine. But before we can share this meal, we need to gather our elements. We need to set our table. So please, at this time, make a sacred space. Gather up your elements of wine, bread, and grape juice as we sing.
Now that the table is set, we hear the story of how this holy meal came of communion and promise came to be. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Finally, before we eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, we pray. So let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share in this meal the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us out into your world as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service today, we remember that Jesus gathers us in worship to send us out into the world to share God's love. We are sent out as baptized children of God, 
and to help us remember this. I invite you to dip a finger in some water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else on the forehead with a cross saying, remember, you are God's child and God loves you. peace of Christ is with you always. Let's share the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Thanks be to God.